Okay, here we are. Uh, today I'm going to be giving a presentation that is an overview to Systems Innovation Hubs. It's based upon the PDF guide. I'll link below. You'll find it on the website. It'll give you all the information about what a Systems Innovation Hub is and how to set one up. Let's jump into the first section here. It's the kind of overview to what we're talking about. So what are Systems Innovation Hubs? Uh, these Systems Innovation Hubs are a network of local communities for learning about and doing systems innovation. These are spaces for bringing people and organizations together for shared learning about systems thinking and innovation for different kinds of events, activities, uh, services, and collaborations. We'll talk about uh, that in more detail now, but that's the very kind of general concept here. It's a combination of both learning and doing. Um, it's not just for learning and networking, but also collaboration and doing. It's kind of a lab model. It's about aligning and empowering individuals and organizations towards creating meaningful impact on a systemic level by building their capacity around systems thinking and systems innovation, the different ideas and methods. So it's a community of learners, a kind of community of practice, should we say, a space where people learn uh, the practice of systems innovation together. And uh, yeah, it's a lab for experimenting. So it's trying to take those ideas, uh, not just learn them in theory, but uh, also learn them in practice, how to actually use them. So exploring how to do systems level innovation in practice. So this is a global network. Um, SI hubs are a global network of local hubs. Uh, it's trying to get some kind of synergy between the global and the local by creating local groups. We aim to tap into the local experience, knowledge, and innovation uh, whilst working to connect them through the internet into a global community. Uh, we call that the Systems Innovation Network, and we'll say a little bit about that before we uh, jump into the hub specifically. Um, so the SI network uh, is the overall network, um, it's the online community. Hubs are local communities within this overall network. Uh, so firstly, uh, what, are, what is this network? We're an open collaborative network for learning and applying new ideas from systems thinking towards tackling complex challenges and enabling transformational change. We call this systems innovation. Quite a new idea. Um, we're an online community of some four or 5,000 individual members and organizations. You'll find out all about that by visiting the website, systemsinnovation.io. Um, so this is uh, what we do and why we do it. Um, we do it by building a community of systems innovators uh, to develop the capacity of individuals and organizations uh, towards uh, being able to actually do systems level innovation um, we do that providing, by providing educational content, developing toolkits, hosting events, and providing various uh, support services. And this is why we do it. It's because complex wicked challenges such as systemic inequality, uh, climate change, cybersecurity, political paralysis, or, or supply chain complexity require new approaches that involve new, more holistic ways of thinking and new, more networked and collaborative ways of organizing. And we're here to make that happen um, through a kind of a community approach. So we'll say a bit about this approach before we uh, get more into the details of a hub. Um, today, many people talk about the potential of systems thinking, but the potential of this new approach remains largely unrealized. Uh, we see hubs as platforms for developing this new approach in theory and practice within specific contexts. So how do we do system, how do we do this? Um, we do it through a community, a kind of community model, a community practice, uh, connecting people around shared interests for discussion, knowledge sharing, experience exchange for the development of shared tools and methods to spark different forms of collaborations. So that's uh, yeah, very high level overview, a uh, quick introduction, and now you should know a little bit about the overall network, and we can talk about more specifically uh, what a hub looks like. And here we're going to say what are the services what does a hub actually do let's get into that so these are the activities and the very general uh, categorization of activities the hub uh, may do um, so there's a whole set around connecting connecting people to build a community uh, through regular events uh, meetups presentations we'll look at those in a sec seconds there's a lot around learning uh, teaching about systems thinking and systems change 
creating, working on real-world projects, design, innovation, or consulting services. And uh, change, actually trying to do systems, systems change, transformational change, uh, creating collaborations for systems level change. So those are the general kind of categories that the hub uh, may be involved in, in terms of the, the activities. Let's look a little bit at what that's actually like in practice. So the connecting uh, aspect, that could be guest speakings, could be discussion forums, could be open spaces. The learning, so we created a series of guides uh, on the website, open source uh, guides that provide a kind of um, an overview to systems innovation, ideas, methods, and, and tools, and so forth. And that's kind of uh, the foundations, the knowledge base for the uh, training and education. And uh, yep, provide presentations based upon that, and also workshops, and uh, also develop toolkits, develop that um, set of ideas and content. So creating this is another category of activities um, might be around design, innovation, uh, services, or some kind of makeathon uh, things, design jams, uh, different kinds of projects the community could be working on, and yet different kind of services. And then finally around uh, change, enabling transformational change, creating different forms of collaboration, uh, maybe running a lab kind of uh, initiatives or um, yeah, different kind of initiatives. Hub is a platform for launching systems change uh, projects and initiatives. So those are the different kinds of uh, activities. And uh, ultimately we're doing that as a way to, as mentioned, enable systems innovation. This is about actually um, doing this in practice. As we said, the Hub is a platform for trying to do systems innovation. Um, and ultimately what we're doing there really is trying to shift the equilibrium within a specific, specific uh, geography, within a specific domain, perhaps, um, from something that uh, we would recognize today, uh, kind of piecemeal competition. Each organization has to recreate the wheel and compete with others to something that's more collaborative, and it's kind of systemic collaboration, creating an infrastructure collaboration for the emergence of systems level functions. Uh, so it's a collaborative platform. Uh, really, that's one way of thinking about it. Um, that's what the network is, um, and hubs are likewise. They're designed as collaborate, collaborative spaces around an open source set of tools and methods. So it's also thinking about those tools and methods as kind of an app, a repository of little apps. Over time, we develop an app store of different methods, models, techniques, design, and process, processes, workshops, templates, etc. Um, some, some can be free, some can be, be paid. Um, yeah, and that gets into the idea of the business model. How does it work on that level? So the business model, uh, hubs are financially independent. Uh, there is no fee for setting up a hub or running one. Hubs start as voluntary associations, but may develop uh, their own business model over time, providing paid services according to what the partners of the hub decide. So there's kind of two business models here. One is the platform. We'll talk more about the organizational structure in, in a minute. Uh, but the overall platform, that's the website. Um, that has a business model in terms of creating educational content. And as mentioned, that's kind of separate from the Hub's business model, which would be more around uh, value-added uh, services. Let's take a look at what some of those might be. We call this a freemium uh, business model for each activity. Uh, the, uh, that a hub provides, it can be uh, free or paid. All revenue stays, and we call that, yeah, you give away a certain amount of those. Let's take a look at it. You give about away some of those activities or do some of them, many of them for free, and that's uh, uh, free, but then you uh, may add different, some of those on top of that uh, for paid. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, freemium. So all revenue stays with the hub and is redistributed amongst the contributors uh, in the hub according to the decisions of the hub partners. So that's the business model, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. I think you get the idea. Uh, we're starting to touch upon here the kind of organizational structure there. Who are the hub partners? Um, how do we organize the community? And that's the third section here. So the network, the SI network, we call it. 
is the platform um, in the center there. The organization is developed as a partnership. Um, Hub represents Hub representatives from the different circles form partners in the overall SI network or SI platform that uh, develops the guidelines and decisions about the general matters affecting all hubs. So, um, yeah, we have an overall network and then we have two members. Let's take a look at the details of that, actually. Uh, we'll see it on this next slide. So, organizers... In each circle, we can call these uh, hub circles also in terms of their organization, uh, there's uh, a number of organizers. It could be anywhere between two and, and say 10 or something. Um, and two of these are representatives of that hub. Um, and they represent the hub in the overall network. And they are the um, people who are kind of primarily responsible uh, for organizing the hub. Um, uh, but then there are also partners who kind of support those. Um, and they are hub partners. Yep, and I'll show you now what the actual organization there looks like in terms of at the center, we have the organizers, the people um, who I just showed you there who are kind of organizing uh, what's happening. But then on the outside, um, this is the model of a hub as a platform. We have the members on the outside there. And then there's a uh, various sorts of exchanges between them. So it's a kind of an open model, uh, somewhat fluid, uh, but there's a kind of categorization between the organizers in the center, uh, people making it happen, and then on the outside, the members. Um, yeah. So uh, representative, this is one of the key roles. Um, one or two people per hub. Um, they play a key role in connecting between the overall network and the local group. Um, and then around them, as mentioned, there can be a number of different uh, members who are taking on different uh, functional roles, functions. It's not actually roles they're taking on. These are functions. These are things that they uh, might do, connecting, advising, might be evangelists, might do stuff around communications and social media, might be there to help with events, to support in different kinds of projects, facilitators, for the learning, that's an important role. Might be curating knowledge in some way, um, or they might be doing partnerships. So those are some of the, the functions that um, the organizers may take on and, and one person can take on more than one uh, function there. So it could look like, look like that. Okay, so let's stay going. Uh, we're talking about the overall kind of organization uh, structure here and um, you may have noticed it, a hub is a geographical location and the network is based around cities primarily, um, not actually nations, it's cities, uh, but those cities can be clustered into nations or continental networks. They have one for Europe or North America or, or Southeast Asia or somewhere. Um, obviously certain uh, cultures and regions form clusters um, and that can be represented in the network of hubs. Um, there's also themes so systems innovation community is organized into cross-cutting themes um, like systems design or food systems, energy, education, etc. These are specific domains we work within to get better at doing systems level innovation. So yeah, there's quite a few of those. Um, what is it, 25 of them in all different areas where we're kind of exploring what it means to do systems innovation in that area, in that uh, domain. And so a hub uh, can both be a kind of general purpose hub providing uh, many different services within different domains, or it can be more kind of specific, right? Just focusing on one, one area, kind of an energy hub or a finance hub or a food hub. Um, and then it's just focusing on that specific area. And these are the locations for 2020, just to give you an idea of what the overall network looks like. Still growing, there'll be a lot more in uh, 21. We've got three in North America, quite a few. Uh, Europe is getting a bit crowded at this stage. We've got three in uh, Germany and a few others there. We've got uh, yeah, five across Asia and in Australia. That's what it looks like there. Um, let's finally talk about what it takes to set up a hub. What does that uh, kind of process look like? Um, yep, 
Uh, let's look at that. So setting up a hub follows a process that can take approximately 8 to 10 months. Mm, doesn't happen overnight, it takes a bit of time. Um, this starts with uh, becoming a candidate hub as you collect a core team of organizers. From here we start a six month incubation period uh, involving training in systems innovation ideas and methods uh, in parallel with developing the why, what and how of your organization. So this is kind of the timeline there, the setup process, the candidate hub to start off, I'll talk in a second about what a candidate hub is, can take two to six months. Then there's an incubation process uh, during which your startup hub takes about six months and then you're up and running and off you go. So a candidate hub, just say a few words about that. Um, we get many requests for hubs, uh, but many of them not suitable, and that's primarily to do with location. Uh, but some are, and these become candidate hubs. A candidate hub is one that um, has been uh, selected to become a hub at some stage in the future. Uh, the candidate hub duration may last anywhere from two to six months, depending on the context uh, and backing and the backlog of other other um, hubs that need to be started. So um, once you've actually started, once ready, the hub will start an incubation period of six months in which uh, time, yeah, we'll be doing this. These are uh, three different tracks here I'll show you. Uh, one is around the development of the hub itself, as mentioned, the what, why, how, and who of the, the overall organization. Um, getting you ready to, for, for the first events. Um, second one's around knowledge, developing your actual understanding of systems innovation, the ideas and methods and so forth. That's another track. It takes about six months learning the guides, um, joining for uh, peer learning uh, discussions, and there's a video course and, and so on. And also developing the community is another aspect of this. So those are the kind of uh, main activities or tracks during uh, setting up a hub, which is about a six month process. So yeah, once you're up and running after that, um, after the incubation period, you're ready to start your first events. Um, you're now a fully fledged hub. Going forwards, you'll be part uh, of the overall uh, network and involved in that in different ways around uh, decision making or um, different kinds of uh, activities and so on. Okay, that's a, a general kind of overview to what a hub is, um, how it works, and how to set one up. Um, as mentioned, you can uh, find this guide on the website. I'll post a link uh, below so you can go into the details. And um, that's all for now, folks. Um, thanks for watching.